The bones of the skull that surround the middle ear, it's called the mastoid bone. It's honeycombed with hundreds of air cells that are lined with mucus but not ciliated. There are two windows or to the middle ear. Um, a section of the bony portion of the inner ear extends into the middle ear space, and that protrusion is called the promontory. Above that and below that are these two windows. The top is the oval window, and in the oval window sits the base of the stapes, or the last of the middle ear bones, the ossicles, and below the promontory sits the round window, which is covered by a thin, tough, elastic membrane that helps to release pressure from the cochlea. There are three very small bones in your body, in fact the tiniest, called the ossicles, that are in the middle ear. They are each named for their shape, the malleus, the incus, and the stapes. The stapes footplate occupies the oval window and it pushes on the cochlea. The malleus and the incus are tightly connected. The inward and outward movement of the umbo of the tympanic membrane causes these two bones to rotate. So a compression wave in the ear canal pushes on the tympanic membrane and it starts this uh, chain reaction through the bones. So there you go, we have the malleus embedded in the tympanic membrane, the incus of the stapes, and the stapes footplate sits in the oval window at the base of the cochlea. So compression waves push on the tympanic membrane and they start these three bones to move. And the final bone, the stapes footplate, pushes a wave of fluid into the cochlea. The middle ear is an impedance matcher. So there are increased pressures going from a large area of the tympanic membrane to the small area of the oval window. Then there's the lever action of the malleus upon the stapes, and finally the bulking of the tympanic membrane. So remember I said you have to get from air to fluid, and you're going in two different mediums. So um, without the middle ear, it would be like you were swimming underwater. But because we have the middle ear, which is an impedance matcher, we get an extra boost, an oomph of sound, uh, that's 23 times what it would be if there were no middle ear system. And this provides an increase in sound of 30 decibels to compensate for the air to fluid mismatch. So it's done, one, by the increased pressure of the large area of the tympanic membrane. So all that pressure on the tympanic membrane gets pushed to the much smaller area of the stapes footplate in the oval window. Then there's the lever action of the malleus and the stapes and the buckling of the tympanic membrane. There are also some non-auditory structures of the middle ear. Um, the fallopian canal, which contains a portion of the facial nerve, so a portion of the facial nerve runs through the middle ear. There are two middle ear muscles whose primary functions, they're a bit debatable. Um, what they really do is they help to lessen the loud sounds of our body. So chewing and speaking is really loud, but the middle ear muscles help to make it so that we don't necessarily hear those loud sounds. The stapedius muscle uh, it contracts when there's a loud sound. It's a reflex. So if I were to bang a pot against your ear, the stapedius muscle would contract and pull the tympanic membrane upward and help to lessen that, uh, that loud sound coming into your ear. But the thing is that it is a reflex, so it doesn't hold for a long time, so it really doesn't provide much of a protective mechanism. There's also the tensor tympani, which operates in the same way as the stapedius muscle.